<laughs> okay, good afternoon, good Arab Shabbos. Hope you're doing well despite not getting the shul email and uh, <laughs> hope that uh, things are going well at the end of this crazy week, getting back to normal. Uh, we're going to do uh, a couple of Rashi's here from Achrimos. Uh, if I could find where I put it. Here we go. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, so the Torah exhorts us, um, not just in terms of specific mitzvahs, but in a general way to keep the mitzvahs of the Torah to differentiate ourselves from the nations that we're going to be encountering. As the Torah says, Kimase Eretz Mitzrayim is the beginning of the Yom Kippur afternoon uh, Torah reading as well. Kimase Eretz Mitzrayim Asher Yishavtem Ba Lo Sa'asu, Kimase Eretz Kena Asher Yengviyas Chem Shama Lo Ta'asu, Uvechu Kosehem Lo Se'lechu. Um, you're leaving Mitzrayim, you're coming to Canaan. Both of those nation, nations are particularly degenerate in their behavior and their idolatry. And we don't want you to become steeped in the behavior of either of those nations or anybody else, but specifically those two. And you shouldn't follow in their laws. The Torah here, Arashi here tries to comment, what's Bechuko Seim Lo Selechu? If we already know, Kemaseir it's Mitzrayim, you shouldn't do like their actions. And the Torah gives us all kinds of mitzvahs and prohibitions about not imitating the Gentiles around us. So what's this general prohibition? It gives different guesses, but in a general sense, this is a prohibition against Darche Ha'amori about following the practices of non-Jews, which is a whole halakhic topic in and of itself. Which practices are forbidden? Religious practices, every practice, practices which make no sense, which only make sense. It's a lot of different discussion about what uh, falls under those categories, but we still have many laws today which follow uh, this halacha of Hukar Seim Lo Lechu, even though the nations around us are not necessarily idolatrous. But then by in addition to telling us not to follow their laws, we're also told and encouraged to follow our own laws. As Mishpatai Ta'asu, my laws you should do. Ves Hukotai Tishmeru, and my Hukim, my laws, my statutes you should keep. Laleches Behem, to walk in them. Ani Hashem Elokeichem, I am the Lord your God. Not only that, ushmartem is hukosai. Not only should you follow in my laws and do my laws, there are many different verbs being used here. Lalechas, tasu, you should do them, you should walk in them or follow them. But in addition, ushmartem, you should keep them. My chukim, my mishpatim, asher yase adam osam ha'adam, vachai bahem, and you should live by them. You can see my Torah and my email from this morning, which hopefully did go out. Ani Hashem, I am your God. So many different things to say about these psukim, beautiful psukim, interesting psukim. What you notice is when the Torah is encouraging us to follow the laws of Hashem, it uses two words, and it uses both of them in two subsequent psukim, mishpatai and chukotai, my mishpatim and my chukim, and then again, shmartim, chukotai and mishpatai, talking about mishpatim and chukim twice here in the span of two psukim. So what's the difference between mishpatim and chukim? So Rashi uh, says, I believe, in numerous places in the Torah, but this is one of them, one of the famous instances. Mishpatai tasu, elu dvarim ha'amur in b'Torah b'mishpat, she'ilu lo namru hayakidai la'omra. These are the types of laws that are stated in the Torah, which are logical, which are sensical. Even if the Torah had not mentioned them, they were kedai la'omra. It's something that any human being would have wanted to say, would have been encouraged to say, would have you know, been interested to say, would have been logical for them to say certain laws, lo tirzach, not murdering, okay? So we understand the Torah gives us that law and we keep it because the Torah gave us that law, but had the not, Torah not given us that law, probably based on basic human need to preserve life, we would have come up with that law on our own. Those are the logical ones, the ones that are in consonance with our own way of thinking as human beings. That's mishpatim. What's chukim? These are the types of laws contained in the Torah that are edicts of the king. Melech, king, the king of all kings, made a certain gezerah, a certain edict. This is what you're supposed to follow, even if it's not logical, even if it's not something we would have done on our own or thought of on our own or feel is in consonance with our way of life or way of thinking. It's a gezerah samelech. It's what Hashem commanded. Um, this is the types of laws, this is the ones where our Yitzhahara gets at us, right? And says to us, why should we keep those laws? The nations of the world um, respond to those laws and say to us, ah, you're so foolish, what do you need them for? 
there's such examples as Achilles Chazir, Levishas Kalayim, Taras Mechatas, uh, not eating pork, wearing not wearing kilayim, mixes of linen and wool. These are things that human beings don't necessarily logically come and conclude that we shouldn't do. Who cares if you're wearing wool and linen? This is exeris tamelech, things that don't necessarily make sense to us, but that Hashem commanded us. That our Yitzhahara could easily say, hey, this makes no sense. Why should we keep it? The nations of the world will say to us, ah, why do you do that? It makes no sense. It's not logical. What human need does it serve? Those are the types of responses that we could get to a chok, to a, a law that has no rational basis to it. And therefore, we conclude that it uh, it is only observed because it's exeris tamelech. So that's what Hashem told us to do, which is why the words ani Hashem elokechem are tacked onto that part of the pasuk. At mishpatayitas, you should fulfill my mitzvot. You should do my mitzvot, which are mishpatim, which are logical to you. Period. Right. In addition to that, chukotai, the chukim the laws which are not necessarily rational or logical. Those as well, you should keep to go in their ways. Why? Because after all, I am God and I commanded them and therefore you have to follow them whether or not they make sense to you. We have a lot of laws today that fit into these two categories. There are other subcategories of mitzvahs in the Torah, but those are the two main ones which are framed here. And you can see how important they are by the fact that they're repeated twice in the span of these two psukim. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great Shabbos. Thank you. Here you too, Rabbi, and everybody okay. else. Shalom. Be well. Hey, Rabbi.